Welcome back to the vlog. If you're new here, my name's Katie. I'm a flutist living in New York City. And if you're not new here, hi, good to see you again. So it's Monday. It's the start of another week in my life as a musician in New York City vlog. I just got back from a massage, so I'm feeling a little like disheveled, but not like a spa massage, but from a physical therapist. It was like, you know, not like relaxing necessarily. I'm having some pain. I mean, I've always had pain in my shoulders and my neck. I have TMJ, um, so I think that you know, that's all related to that, like clenching the jaw and all that. Um, but she works with a lot of musicians and it was really just great. She worked on my hands a bit too. Oh my gosh, that just like, that did feel, it's like really intense, but it also feels really good. And just to kind of, get everything back in alignment and especially on a Monday the week of a concert it just feels really good so it was my first time going but I'm definitely gonna go back and see her again she was great I'm lucky that I've never had a performance related injury when I was in high school or maybe middle school I had a bit of carpal tunnel going on because my wrist position was really like this no matter what my teacher told me, but that resolved itself and it's not the case anymore. But I'm just, I don't know, I think as I'm in my 30s now, I'm just trying to prevent things before they happen and just really trying to be more mindful of my body and just, you know, this holistic view of being a musician. Because we do use all these small muscle groups and it's it's a lot. We use small ones and big ones. It's a it's a workout. It's a physical thing. But yeah, it's another cold day in New York City. It's about 32 degrees, but we've got some sunshine today, which is nice. So if you watched the previous vlog, you know that I have a concert coming up at the end of this week with the Chamber Music Collective that I co-direct. And we're performing at a space called Grace Farms in Connecticut. And it is a beautiful, artsy, nature-y space. It's just, it's stunning. We have rehearsals this week leading up to the concert on Saturday. And on top of that, of course, I've got all my teaching and all my social media stuff that I do to keep up with. So it's going to be a busy week, um, but I'm looking forward to it. And yeah, I'm excited to be bringing you along with me. Earlier this morning, I did a little practicing already and I have to do some teaching in a little bit. So I'm gonna try to get some more practicing in now. If you watched my February reset video, you know that I made a practice plan for myself and I've been doing a pretty good job of sticking to that, which I'm very proud of. And I think I did a good job at making something that was manageable and realistic. So yeah, I'm gonna dive into that. So let's go. <laughs> So today's kind of just been a day of getting things done around the apartment that need to be done. I need to clean up a bit in here, um, but I uh, also need to do some practicing. I spent a lot of time today on converting some of my old YouTube videos into blog posts. I've only gotten like two done and I have a few more in the works, but this is something that I want to do more of posting on my blog over on my website. So go check that out if that's something you're interested in. It's been interesting to revisit some of my super, super old videos, like my buying your first flute video. That was interesting <laughs> to go back and see some vintage Katie flute moments. Um, but yeah, so I've got that up on the blog and yeah, now I need to do some practicing. Tomorrow we have a rehearsal for our concert on Saturday and yeah, need to do some cleaning up of the flute room because no matter how often I clean it, just at the end of the day, it just seems to be a disaster again. I don't know. Can anyone else relate to that? It's like, it's never done. <laughs> So I just finished practicing my scales. I am obsessed with these new earplugs that I just got from Loop. They are really good at blocking out those high notes, but it's like you can still hear the music and everything that you need to hear, but just, you know, those high Cs, high C sharp type Ds, it's when you're doing a lot of repetitive stuff in the high register, you want to use hearing protection for sure. And also look how cute this little case is that it comes in. 
I also got a pink case, of course. But yeah, really loving these. I'll link them in the description box below in case you want to check them out. But yeah, so we have a rehearsal later. I thought that I would show you what we're playing. The pieces that I'm playing on the program, we've got, of course, the iconic piece by Valerie Coleman, Danza de la Mariposa. And this is a piece that I've played a lot. And every time I get to perform it, it's just... I love it love it love it love it and also she yesterday i think it was she was just it was just announced that she is now going to be on the composition faculty at juilliard which is incredible so really cool and then we've got a movement from a duo by divian for flute and viola we've got just the badinari movement from the bach b minor suite we've got the vivaldi la notte concerto for flute and strings La Notte meaning the night. And then finally, we've got Ginesteras Impresiones de la Puna for flute and string quartet. So it's a really fun program. And then we've also got um, a few pieces that are just strings. So excited and looking forward to that. I love thinking about putting concert programs together. And it's always so fun to get to sit down with Julia, who is my co-director, and to get to form these programs for our Chamber Music Collective. This program we put together also in collaboration with the director of the music series that we're playing at. Um, but it's just always so fun to get to sit down, have an idea, and think how can each piece relate to the other. So a fun question for all of you. If you had to put together a recital program or a chamber music concert or an orchestra concert program, tell me in the comments what would be on your dream program and what would it be titled? Would it be themed or would it just be your favorite pieces? I don't know, let me know. Tell me in the comments. last night we have one more rehearsal tomorrow before the big concert day but i think overall we're in really good shape and it's gonna be a great event so we're so excited grace Farms sent us our itinerary for the day they're gonna have a little tour for us so we can see the grounds also have a little tea moment where we can taste some of the teas that they have there so it should be fun we're all really looking forward to it but today's a big practice day and then later i'm gonna try to go find a cute cafe and get some work done on my computer do some of the you know, less glamorous things that go on behind the scene, like answering emails, updating dates on my website, editing this video or other videos, doing some posts for a few of the social media pages that I manage for this summer festival. So yeah, there's a lot of other things that go into being a freelance musician. It's not just practicing and performing and teaching. There's like all these other things that have to happen to make all of this stuff 
keep running and that can be a really hard balance i think sometimes and i think that maybe it's different these days but when i was in school there wasn't so much emphasis on like how to have a freelance career or like how to make your own career what that looks like i think you know there was more emphasis on how to win an orchestra job or like how to prepare for a competition or an audition but you know the real life of most musicians looks a lot different from that so but if you are in music school right now, let me know how things changed. Are you taking more entrepreneurial ship type music courses? I did though have one really great class like that at Juilliard with a teacher named Barely, and she's actually a flutist. I remember one activity that really has been something very useful that I use all the time with Julia, who we run our chamber music collective, is we had to go out during the class and just find random places in the city and just go up and ask them if they would be interested in having a concert at the time it was very uncomfortable and I remember we went up to a church and they were like no we already have a concert series so it just it was a good exercise in the fact that you are going to get a lot of no's but at the same time the only way things can happen is by asking and you never know so okay but enough talking time to go practice So rehearsal went well this morning, concert is tomorrow. The presenter let us know that they've sold over 300 tickets, which is just craziness. Like to think back to 2020, beginning of 2020 before COVID, to our Chamber Collective's first concert when it was just still a dream and something brand new. To think back to that moment and now to see all the things that we've done since that time and now to be performing in a beautiful space 300 people at least there and to have everything really be handled for us it's just such a blessing and so we're feeling really grateful for this this morning after the rehearsal with julia i went to drop off our chairs to this art gallery in the lower east side they contacted us pretty last minute because they have an event that they want someone to play violin at, to play some Bach. 
and Julia is gonna do that on Sunday, the day after the concert, so she's super busy right now. It all happened really fast, but it turns out that the gallery thought that our mission with our collective was a perfect fit for what they're doing there in their space, so that's just another really cool thing that happened. But anyway, we're letting them use our folding chairs that we have for our collective. We provide the chairs for most of our concerts, there's been a few exceptions. Like obviously tomorrow is an exception to that, but we're letting them use our chairs for their event where Julia is gonna be playing. And then I think in the future, we're gonna be able to use their space for performances, which is really cool. They wanna collaborate and work with us. So lots of exciting things happening. And I think it just goes to show that there are people out there that wanna collaborate with you. It's just a matter of finding these people. People are always saying classical music is dying. You know, it's it's, I think that we just have to kind of change the way we're looking at it and as musicians we have to, you know, gather a new skill set. We, we can't just depend upon getting an orchestra job or being called for big gigs. Like, there's a lot of other things that have to come together to create a sustainable career. So it's concert day. Honestly, I'm feeling a bit, not about the playing aspect, but just like, are people going to be enjoying it? Are things gonna go smoothly? We also have to have a moment where in the intermission, we're sitting down with the presenter and he's gonna interview us and ask us some questions. And then we have to go jump right back to play the second half. So I think that it's gonna be okay, but that just kind of like, you know, you're in performance mode and then you have to sit down and then do a lot of speaking and then you have to stand up and do some more playing. And we normally do speak from the stage, we normally introduce each piece and talk to the audience, but in an actual interview it's just kind of a different aspect to have thrown in there. But I'm staying calm, I'm staying centered, doing a little easy warm up, not anything crazy. And then we'll pack up our stuff and get ready to go. They have a car coming to pick us up to take us there. It's, a, it's about an hour away in Connecticut from New York City. I just have to remember sometimes, like, this is a moment where I'm doing exactly what I want to do and just try to savor that. Getting to share our love of music with an audience, like, that's, that's the stuff. <laughs> Connecting with an audience and just letting the music speak for itself and
Sunday. The concert was a success. There were over 350 some people there, which was crazy. This is the biggest audience that our group has performed for because we normally perform in art galleries and smaller, more intimate spaces. So it was crazy to look out there and see so many people in the audience. And the craziest thing happened. Remember the other day I was talking about that entrepreneurial musician class that I took at Juilliard and how useful and great that that class was. The teacher of that class, Barley, who I haven't, you know, seen in, in many years since I was at school, she came to the concert and she showed up to the green room after. It was so wonderful to see her there and to have her support and to be able to tell her thank you for all the things that um, she taught us there in school and she's also a flutist so afterwards I was like oh my goodness I hope that I did all these flute pieces justice in front of her um, but it was just the most wonderful surprise and like kind of full circle moment to have her there so oh, really really special so so today I did my teaching and now I'm about to go ahead to a gallery to see Julia perform. Like I mentioned before, this is at a gallery that is interested in possibly collaborating in the future with us. Um, but they have an exhibit up right now entitled Partita. The artist was super inspired by the Bach violin partitas. So Julia is going to be performing one of those today. So it's a big weekend for her. And today I just get to kind of sit back and relax and enjoy. Um, but I'm excited to see how the space looks with the art and with her performing. And hopefully get to meet some other art and music lovers. It's been a long week, but I'm feeling very, very grateful. And as always, I'm so grateful to have this platform that I have here and to have all of your support and it just means a lot to me. So I don't know if I say it enough, but thank you for being here and being a part of this channel. <laughs> Thank you. 